This is Cambodia, 1975, and music is everywhere. It's on these streets that Arn Chorn Pond grew up, listening. When I was a little boy in Cambodia, I was living in a temple. I was already a kind of homeless. We would snuck out to a movie theater and watch American war movie and kung fu. We hear music all the time. I heard uh, rock and roll. Every morning when we get up, we heard all these songs. We heard about the war, but I didn't understand about war. Sometimes we heard the, the words Khmer Rouge, but uh, it didn't mean anything to us. As spring came, so did the soldiers. After years of fighting, the national government fell to the Khmer Rouge, a rebel group determined to transform Cambodia into an agrarian-based communist utopia. I heard the truck and tanks on the highway. Khmer Rouge were cheering. They raised their guns and they screamed, peace is coming, peace is coming. That was the first time I, I felt that there was something wrong. As the Khmer Rouge came to power, they began ordering everyone from the cities into the countryside with the promise that they could return in a few days. Thousands, thousands of people packed into the highway. I've never seen anything like that before. Along the highway, I started to see some, some dead people. Now I'm being taken away from my family among about 700 children. We were forced to work from five in the morning to midnight. M many times there were no foods for us and they said that you don't work hard enough. Soon it became clear that the temporary camps were permanent and the Khmer Rouge began its program of systematic killing. All of a sudden, they, they wanted to start a, a music group because they don't want to, people to hear the screaming of the killing. And I raised my hand for the music. I knew that I had to play well for the Khmer Rouge. If I don't work hard, I would, I would die. I, I thought my life couldn't even get worse than what I've seen. But as in 1979, when the Vietnamese invaded Cambodia, now no, no more music next for us. The Khmer Rouge have trucks full of guns. Thousands of children like Arne, some as young as eight years old, were forced to fight in the Khmer Rouge's war against Vietnam. I just have to figure out how to shoot, otherwise I would die. I was uh, countless battles and kids are dying all the time. You just have to continue to be vicious and make yourself numb to all of this and you have to be a killer. I ran away from the line because uh, I could not take it seeing those kids. I took off into the jungle. After weeks of walking, Arne eventually made it to a refugee camp just over the Thai border, where he caught the attention of an American missionary named Peter Pond. He was a worker and trying to rescue other kids and I sort of clung to his neck. And the next morning he came back and tried to find me and brought some food. He kept coming back and see me, you know, and he brought me to America. Arn and two other Cambodian boys finally arrived in their new home, Jefferson, New Hampshire. He's a crazy guy, Peter Pond. He, uh, he took us to, uh, to McDonald's first. And then uh, I, I don't like, I threw up. The next week after, it was ninth grade. It was a high school. The kids has no idea where we were from. And they start calling names and, you know, slur and all of these things that I never heard before. That time I was ang really angry all the time. I was suicidal, eventually I ran away from home. I had an urge of telling my story, but I could not do it. My dad, he just said, uh, you all must speak. If you speak out, the American kid would listen. That was really a turning point in a way for me internally. I think there's no other way uh, for me to 
understand American kids or American kids to understand. I mean, there's no other way. Arne spoke to a packed audience of thousands at St. John the Divine and began a lifelong journey to tell his story. He started with Children of War, an organization dedicated to helping children overcome suffering from war and other traumas. After graduating college, Arne began to work with gang members in Lowell, Massachusetts, sharing his story and helping them share theirs. I walk the street and find these uh, Cambodian gang members. Many of them ended up in jail and I visit them in jail and never give up on them like someone didn't give up on me. Do I learn that lesson? In 1993, Arne returned to Cambodia. He found a changed country, but realized that the musical traditions he had learned, the instruments he played, had been lost. He found the master musicians destitute, living on the streets. The war have cut, destroyed the roots of, of life. So was the birth of Cambodian living arts. We found these few masters first, and then uh, we could be able to connect this master to the young people. Arn Chorn Pan is one of the most inspiring people that I've ever met. He's taken the adversity that happened to him and turned it into something really, really extraordinary and really beautiful. It was certainly an honor and a privilege for me to be trusted with those stories. So now the book is out, and there's a lot to talk about, about how it resonates today. The trick is to connect, to find connection. Connection is relationship. Relationship is to share the story. If we tell the stories from the past, we won't make those mistakes again. We need contact somehow. It's healing, it's power, more than anything else I could think.